Hi guys, welcome to Tubetastic Facts, the best place on YouTube for facts about anything and absolutely everything. In this episode of It's a Matter of Facts, I'll be taking a look at our furry loving friends and most loyal companions, the dog. Now I'm a massive dog person and I have been my entire life. After my granddad used to bring his golden retriever Ben over to go for a walk, as well as previously owning the most gorgeous looking male Rottweiler, his name was Bruno, I owned a, a stubby little Jack Russell, and I now own a three-legged rescue terrier that I absolutely adore. Um, there is never a dull moment when you own or are even around a dog. For me personally, they understand how you are feeling in a way that humans can't, and their loyalty towards us is the second, it is just second to none. I love seeing my dog get excited about his little walks and it's really just about having that quality time with him in the fresh air. You know, I really do enjoy his company. Also, the best part of coming home from work or even just back from the shop and seeing their reaction to you walking through the front door is absolutely priceless. If only all humans reacted the same way to us, uh, to, to seeing us, it would be great, wouldn't it? Let's get into doggy facts now. Did you know that despite the difficulty in getting an exact number, there are thought to be well over 340 dog breeds known to exist throughout the world, but it could be more um, as many crossbreeds um, have occurred causing this number to rise drastically from previous years. Not only this, but nature has its own special way of creating unique genetic lines that have also been factored into this number and other more widely known breeds have also been known to pop up from time to time. Another cool dog fact is that man and dog have been best friends for well over 3,000 years dating back to ancient times and are even worshipped in some countries such as Nepal and India, particularly during the Hindu festival Kukur Tihar, where dogs are worshipped as a vehicle of a deity Bhairava. Apparently, and I bet you didn't know that the oldest dog breed in the world is also the one that barks the very least and is therefore the most quiet. Now it's not a breed that I've personally heard of before, uh, but the Basenji dog is a hunting breed that originated from Central Africa a very long time ago and categorically is placed as a member of the hound group, particularly a sight hound. Now I don't know about where you live, but I wouldn't think that these are particularly common here in the UK, uh, but I have seen many stray dogs similar to this in places that I've visited, such as Spain, Greece, Portugal, and also Turkey. Uh, for any of you uh, that live abroad or travel frequently, I'm sure that you will agree with me on this one and know what I mean. Now, while science allows us to look at the DNA makeup and genetic evolution of dogs, there are many um, arguments as to where they actually first came from and a recent study indicates that dogs and wolves are likely to have descended from a common ancestor. Now dogs and wolves are also proven to share certain DNA sequences or patterns that would point to the fact that they are both members of a canid family and both share certain behavioural similarities. Breeds such as the Alaskan Malamute or Siberian Husky are a prime example of this, uh, particularly when comparing the appearance as well as their inst instinct to howl when prompted to. Now while some of these breeds could be considered as being uh, large, the average grey wolf is roughly two times the length uh, with a much stronger bite force. Now Siberian Huskies and Alaskan Malamutes both make great pets though and are often very protective over their families particularly uh, those with younger children. Did you also know that like us humans, uh, we have fingerprints that make us totally unique. Each dog has a unique print that can be found on their noses. Unlike us though, a dog's print is very unlikely to be used as a means in which to identify them. Apart from the uh, Canadian Kennel Club, which has been doing this since the late 1930s. Also, the optimum temperature for our canine friends is between 38 and 39 uh, degrees Celsius. And like us dogs, uh, can suffer from colds, snuffly noses and also fevers if their body temperature rises too sharply. Now, as many of you will already know, dogs have, uh, they don't have the ability to sweat like us humans as a means to cool down. 
Instead, they carefully regulate their body temperature by panting their tongues to prevent overheating. This is why it's so important not to leave dogs in hot cars during the summer without the windows down, as this can be absolutely fatal and many dogs die needlessly each year around the world. Did you also know that dogs are very good at understanding how we are feeling by reading our body language and they also use this as one of their many ways to communicate with other dogs. Not feeling sad, happy, anxious, excited or even frustrated and angry. Dogs are super sensitive to changes in our emotions and they can perceive such changes with relative ease. Dogs are also very capable of showing empathy when they can see us humans in a state of sadness or emotional distress. Now special therapy or service dogs are specially trained to carry out particular tasks that can include helping someone who is visually impaired, spotting seizures before they occur, or even just to provide emotional support and much, much more. Therapy dogs are even known to make regular visits to uh, places such as nursing homes, hospitals, schools and even assisted living facilities and make such a difference to people's lives. It is clear that we have so much to be thankful for when it comes to our relationship with dogs and the unconditional love that they provide with us. Another cool fact about dogs is that their sense of smell is anywhere between a thousand and one million times stronger than a human's and a part of your dog's brain that controls smell is around 40 times larger than ours as well. Now you may have wondered why a dog's nose is mostly almost wet and that it is that is to allow them to absorb scent chemicals from the air around them. Now while us humans depend heavily on our eyesight to make sense of the world around us, a dog depends almost entirely on its sense of smell. What dog breed has the best sense of smell, I hear you ask? Well that gong goes to the bloodhound, which is typically bred for hunting and tracking due to its 300 million scent glands, but also they make great family pets too. Dogs also have a very acute ability to hear both low and high uh, frequency sounds, and their hearing is approximately four times better than us humans, and rescue dogs in snowy areas are commonly used particularly to help find and locate avalanche victims. Just in case you were wondering what the world's smallest dog is, the Buer Terrier, will weigh anywhere between four to eight pounds over the course of its 16 year life expectancy and will only grow to between seven and 11 inches in total. Now these dogs are absolutely diddy, I'm not gonna lie. The largest of all dog breeds when considering its total body mass is actually the English Mastiff with an average weight of anywhere between 68 to 110 kilos and a shoulder height of around 27 to 33 inches. The fastest dog breed in the world is actually the Greyhound, clocking in at around 45 miles per hour, or as fast as Usain Bolt. Uh, these are especially good for coursing and racing, and are categorised to the Sighthound family. Now here's one for all you single fellows out there. If you've ever watched 101 Dalmatians, you'll know exactly what I mean by this, but apparently a study found that 82% of people are more confident in approaching an attractive person when accompanied by a canine wingman. While getting at least a phone number from such individuals can prove to be incredibly difficult for some, the fun-loving charisma of a dog can actually help encourage social interaction, thus increasing your chances of getting that very first date. Now we've spoken much in this episode about how lovely dogs are, but have you ever wondered which dog breeds have the strongest bite force. Now I'm going to uncover these statistics right now for you, so you might want to stick around to hear these. In at number eight is the German Shepherd with a bite force of 238 pounds per square inch. In at number seven is the Doberman with a bite force of 245 PSI. In at number six is the American Bulldog with a bite force of 305 PSI. In at number 5 is the African Wild Dog with a bite force of 317 PSI. In at number 4 is a Rottweiler with a bite force of 328 PSI. In at number 3 is the Wolf Dog with a bite force of 407 PSI. In second place is the English Mastiff with a bite force of 556 PSI. And saving the best for last, 
the strongest bite of any dog is the Kangal with a bite force of 743 PSI. Putting this into perspective, the bite force of a Siberian tiger stands at 1050 PSI, an African lion is less at 650 and a grizzly bear is 1200 PSI. Now this is a truly remarkable feat for the Kangal as it looks pretty harmless and they actually make very good family pets too. You certainly wouldn't want to get bit by one though, even by mistake. Now some might argue that dogs have no sense of time, but this really isn't the case. And while they might not be able to tell the time or read a clock like us, they very much know when it's um, their usual time to be walked, fed or played with. Now our dogs are very sensitive to picking up on our habits, routines and schedules and instinctively know on average when one of the above events is likely to occur. Dogs also have roughly the same mental capacity as a two-year-old toddler and can even recognize in the region of 200 words from our vocabulary. Um, a very popular one, I'm sure you'll agree, is the W word or walkies. Tests on various dog breeds in um, communication and even basic arithmetic, uh, you'll find, uh, they found that the smartest of all dog breeds are in fact the Border Collie, uh, Poodles and German Shepherds. Now I hope you enjoyed that, that's all we've got time for in this episode. Um, if you like this video, just please just give it a big like, uh, comment what you, what you thought down below, uh, let me know if you agree with any of these facts, uh, maybe tell me a little bit about your dog, it would just be interesting to read about. Um, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done already to never miss a video. Um, and we hope to see you again for another episode of It's a Matter of Facts. As always, folks, stay safe, stay tubetastic. Thank you for watching.